All right, for this module, we are going to be working in this dashboard for Haruku.com. You need to make sure you sign up for it. So um, <clears throat> it is free, and you just create an account, sign up for it. And once you get in here, you'll be able to um, start up a new repository. This is kind of like GitHub a little bit, except um, this application, uh, if you will, your Python apps can run on the web here. In GitHub, they can't run on the web. Okay. So let me just demo one of these apps. Uh, you click here, uh, and inside it, it has an overview, has a resource page, it shows you how to deploy it. And then you can see like what current activity there is and you can open the app. So if I click open app, it will actually run the app. So it's starting the app up and it takes you to like a whatever the app is. So this happens to be a login page for um, a runner app that I built. OK, so in here, um, that's where you would click the open app. So on the overview page, um, it just kind of tells you all the different times things have been deployed. Under resources, this is where you will be able to see if there is uh, any resources added to this page or to this actual uh, repository. And then over in settings, you can see like what your uh, your Git remote is. Okay, remember we, we have that same thing, but with so it still uses Git, but it uses the Harugu.com instead of GitHub. Okay. And under deploy, it actually tells you the code you would need to make it. So we'll talk about that in just a second. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go back and we're going to create a new one. So we're going to say create new app. And we're, I'm just going to call this one uh, Flask. Uh, it likes dashes in class fall 2024. It says that's good. So I'm going to create the app takes just a second to create the app. App is made. Uh, if I go back over to the overview, it says it's not costing me any money. Okay, that's kind of important. We don't want, we don't need that. We don't need to pay any money for this right now. Um, and then under resources, we want to add another resource too. So for our resources, um, I really like this JAWS DB MySQL. So we're going to grab that and we're going to submit the order. We're going to choose this kite fin free. So again, we like free. Okay. Click submit order and that will start building that one out. See, it says it's building it. Okay. Um, another thing I want you to go out and get is the Haruku CLI, the command line interface. Okay. And it will, what I do is I just type in, give me the Haruku CLI, the, the CLI. It's just a little software package. Um, and you just come over here and say, here's the 64 bit installer, or you can uh, use brew to install the CLI on your computer. Okay. And what that's going to allow you to do is it's going to allow you to use PyCharm to push directly to the directly to Heroku like you would for GitHub. Okay, so that's the second one I want you to get and install. The third the third thing I want you to do is I want you to download the MySQL um, dot com products workbench. So download the workbench. Okay, this will allow us to connect into this database that we're getting right here. Okay. Um, right now, if we click on the database, it just lists, I'm going to delete this one so it doesn't really matter, it just lists like the information for it, but there's no way to actually get in here and make changes to it. So using this download now, allow, uh, I mean this workbench allows us to like actually log in and use that as a, uh, a way to access the database. Okay, And then of course our app will talk with that database. So the database will store the data while our app works on the front end. So it's kind of important for kind of the things that we're going to be doing. So that's pretty much it. I need you to sign up for Roku. I need you to create your first database. And then I need you to um, go and install the command line interface and install MySQL workbench. And then once you have the workbench installed, you need and I have it installed here, I have a bunch of uh, a bunch of different uh, apps that I have. Once you have it installed, I'll show you how to walk through the actual um, setting up your setting up your account, setting up your connection. So I'm going to say, give me a new connection. 
Okay, so I'm just gonna click this little button here and I'm gonna talk to you real quick about setting up your connection. So um, we're gonna come back over here and we're gonna go to our connection here and we're just gonna click on it and all the connection information is right here. Okay, so what I like to do is I like to just take a screen. Well, no, I like to actually just copy this stuff, paste it. So I'm gonna move this out of the way and then I'm gonna open up my, uh, I'm gonna open up my, my SQL new connection and I'm just going to copy. So the first thing I'm going to copy is the host. Okay. Host is going to be host name. So over on the dashboard or in Heroku, it says what it is. Username. My username is root. And then the default schema is also known as the database. So I put, I'm going to put that there. And then the 3306 is a good port. And then the connection name I'm just going to say is, uh, we're going to call this like flask in class example fall 2024. Okay. And then for my password, there is a password inside the dashboard. You have to store it in the vault, but if you try to store it without having the user there, it doesn't really work that well. So make sure you have the host name and the user put in before you store it and then it will kind of store kind of nice and then you click the test connection button and it should come back with a successfully made MySQL connection. All right, so I'm gonna click okay and then I'm gonna go into that. Once I'm into this, what I want you to do is I want you to create a new table. If you happen to see this screen here, okay, and a whole bunch of other panels, maybe you've got a panel like this, and there's other panels. Just get rid of the, the addition. You want just the query editor and you want to be able to switch over to schemas. Okay. So you're going to write your query here and you're going to have your output will come up, come from down here and you can make new tables here. So I just want for right now, I want you to just create a basic table. So we're going to just call this basic. Okay. And we'll give it a basic ID and we'll give, make sure it's the primary key. It's not null and it's auto incremented. And then we'll just have first name and last name. All right, so that's our table, okay? Click apply, click apply, and click finish, okay? And now, that right there is how you create a table. If I wanna edit this table, okay, I can come over here and there's a, if I hold my, I'm going to do this little drop down. If I hold my mouse over it, I get a I get a little wrench or I get a table. If I click on the wrench, I can edit my table. If I click on the little table, I can put data in. So I could say my first name is Brian, last name Marshall. Now, even though I have that in, it is and if I close that, it will not be there. I always have to make sure I click apply and it writes to the database, okay? So putting it in is not the same. It's almost like doing the commit. Um, no, notice the number one was auto incremented. So you don't put a you don't put your primary key in when it's auto incremented. So if you have auto increment here, the number one will automatically show up here for the primary key. Okay, so that right there is all you need to do for your demo. Uh, I mean, this is this is all you need to do for the MySQL Workbench this week. Okay, get it installed, get it connected in, create your first table, add one row of data to it, and that's that's perfect for this week. Okay. Now the next thing that I wanted you to do was make sure you can connect into um, the Heroku. Okay, and I want you to share this, share your Heroku with me. Right. So if you go to Access add collaborator. I want you to add professor at brianmarshall.com. Okay. And we'll see if that will work. So add professor at brianmarshall.com. Since that is a user on here, I should be able to like, and then it should, when I pop here, it should give me all the collaboration ones that I'm a collaborator with down here. Okay. Um, okay. So that right there is well, after you create yours, I just want you to make me a collaborator. Now, let's talk about what we want to do for uh, how do we deploy this. Okay, so I want you to also create a new project and we'll deploy it out to um, out out here. Okay, so we're going to say new project. 
and this project's going to be Haruku example and it's being stored everything is right I have my right Python file I click create okay it's creating my virtual environment everything's being created just fine I close my venv folder okay and then I'm I'm going to create a basic flask app but for right now I just want to see that I, that you can connect into the Heroku, okay? So if I come over here and click on the terminal, I'm going to type in Heroku login. And it's going to pop up in a new window that it's actually going to be thinking for a second. And so what you want to do is install the CLI and then restart PyCharm. And then when you do that, you're going to get this press any key to open up the window in a browser. I push the button and then in the browser, it says, what do you want to do? I want to say log in. I'm already logged in. So it makes it real easy. It says you can now close this. You're in. Okay, so now I come back over here and I'm logged in. Okay, now in order for me to push up my files, okay, I'm going to push them up. In order for me to do that, I need to um, set my remote. Okay, I'm going to set the remote. Okay, and all of that code was right inside. So let me go into here, was right inside deploy. Okay, so the first thing you do is Heroku login. Then you and then you've got to so don't don't worry about going to this project because you're already in this project right so um, then you're gonna do with the initialization and then you're gonna set the remote okay so that's you uh, you initialize git okay then you set the remote then you add any files you have you write your comment and you push it out to Heroku okay so let's do that real quick so we're here we're gonna go init git and it says the term does not write up oh, other way around git init all right hey i i like to copy just like the next person i'm gonna paste that in git init it says it's been initialized and notice that once i did that i get this little commit button here okay it's not gonna know where it goes so if i click on this and start doing this gonna say i doesn't know where my remote is which means if i come over here and do this and i copy this line of code look what it's doing it's heroku git remote says everything, and then it actually gives the name of my Heroku repository that I made. So if I just copy this code, just like that, and paste it in, it does all the work for me. I don't have to worry about typing stuff in wrong. All right, now it says it's been set. Good. All right, now we wanna add. So we're gonna add all, so get add everything, okay? I don't have a lot of uh, stuff in here. There's not anything here, right? Um, but just in case, I'm gonna add all. Okay, and then I'm going to do a commit. So I'm going to say commit everything. So two files change, seven insertions, and then I'm going to push it. Okay, now uh, if your default branch is master, you can now change your main deploy from master to main for both manual and auto deploys. Uh, figure out the instructions here. Um, it doesn't like the word master, it likes the word main sometimes. So we'll just see if that's if that's gonna work. So we're gonna come over here and click this. And it says failed to push, does not match any repositories. So I'm gonna just hit the up arrow and just say master, okay, instead of main. And then it's gonna say it liked it. So sometimes it tells you to do master, sometimes it tells you to do main, um, but it was good. Everything looks like it's been deployed. It didn't like it because there's nothing there. I have nothing to send it. I have nothing. I didn't set up my flask app or anything, but my Git and everything is ready. So it says everything has been, everything has failed because it didn't know what to build. Okay. So over on this end, if I go back and look at like, uh, my logs, it's going to say everything failed. You didn't tell me what you wanted to build because there's nothing in that. Right. So that's going to be the next module is how to, um, is how to actually build out the next video will show you how to actually build out one of those. Um, we won't connect into the database this time, but we'll just send up our basic Flask app that we just created and send it out here to Heroku. So the, the basic Flask app we just did in um, for the exam, that really basic one, we'll just send it out here and see what that does. And that will be in the next video.